Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at two 1x1 aspect ratio devices that have recently launched and seem to be a good match for each other. The Anbanic RG Cube and the ZPG A1 Unicorn promise high-end performance for emulation on a boxy screen. This video aims to compare these devices quickly and concisely and help you make a decision on which one to buy. This is not based on my own hands-on experience though, but rather a gathering of facts of what other hands-on reviewers have found and my analysis of that, mixed with research and my opinion. I do leave links for my source material in the description, so you can check these out for more detail if you want to. I love comparing these handouts, even if it's only on a more theoretical level. So hopefully this quick comprehensive comparison provides you with some useful info. If it does, please remember to like and subscribe and share the video as it really helps the channel out. Also, let me know in the comments what your opinion is, as I love debating and discussing every aspect of these devices with you guys. I have to apologize for the audio quality on this video as well. I've had a bit of a family emergency and I have not been able to get home to record on my best quality mic, so please bear with me. Lastly, there has been some light bleed issues on many units in the initial shipment of the RG Cube. I did cover this in detail in my overview video on the RG Cube, and I will leave a link in the description and at the end of the video if you want more detail on that and want to know what to do about it. For the purpose of comparing in this video, we will assume that the Cube unit does not have this issue, as not everyone who received one had a problem with it. With that said, let's take a look at the specs of these two devices. The Anbanic RG Cube comes out swinging with a notably more powerful Unisoc TA20 processor. It sports 8 cores that run up to 2.7 GHz. It also has a quad-core Mali G57 GPU. It has 8 GB of LPDDR4 RAM and 128 GB of internal storage. The screen is a 4-inch 720x720 IPS LCD display, and it has a 5200 mAh battery that will probably provide between 3-7 to seven hours of battery life depending on what you are playing. It also runs Android 13 as an OS. The ZPG A1 Unicorn on the other hand has a MediaTek Helio G99 8-core processor that runs up to 2.2 GHz. It has a Mali G57 MC2 GPU with 6 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM and 128GB of internal storage, so basically the same as the Cube in this aspect. It also has a 4-inch 720x720 IPS LCD screen, but the battery on the A1 is only 4500 mAh. It also runs Android 13, same as the Cube in this aspect as well. Both of these devices are very similar specs-wise. The Unisox T820 is a little bit more powerful than the G99 processor in the Unicorn, according to most reviewers, but I will discuss that a little bit more later. Both units feature Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and USB-C ports. The RG Cube boasts RGB lighting around its analog sticks though and has a fairly larger battery capacity which should give you longer game time depending on what you play. The Cube also has HDMI out which is a feature that is not available on the Unicorn. So there are some differences in the specs but it is in the design and ergonomics where you really start to notice how unique each unit is. The Anbanic RG Cube lives up to its name with its slightly more bulky design. It features more prominent ergonomic grips at the back, and the device's layout includes stacked shoulder buttons and an SD card slot on the top. The power and volume buttons are located on the right side, which I personally find a bit strange, but they are inset so they should not produce any accidental presses. The ZPG A1 Unicorn, while also sporting a square screen with an identical size, is slightly less bulky with less prominent grips at the back and inline shoulder buttons. This should make it more pocketable than the Cube but hands-on reviews caution that this would probably only fit comfortably into a fairly large cargo pants pocket. Both devices have received positive feedback for their build quality, and most commenters love the color options available. The RG Cube's unique design, including its RGB lighting, gives it a distinctive look. The Unicorn, on the other hand, opts for a more slimmed-down traditional handheld appearance. One area where the Unicorn has an advantage as far as I can see is from the front firing speakers that produce clearer, more direct sound compared to the down firing speakers on the Cube. There are not many review videos out on the Unicorn as yet, but those that I did find really like the smoothness of the Hall Effect analog sticks, and the feel, size and placement of the Buck style 8-way D-pad. At least one reviewer found the D-pad quite a bit better than the Sega style D-pad on the RG Arc, which is a favourite for many. I have to note as well that the analog sticks on the initial cube units produced cardinal directional snapping under testing, so they apparently felt a bit inaccurate. This is a software based problem though and one of the community developers called the Gamma Squeeze has developed a fix for this that can be applied over the latest firmware update. 
I will leave a link in the description if you're interested. That brings us to performance. Both devices excel in emulating systems up to PlayStation 1, as well as Dreamcast and N64 era titles, but where they truly shine is in Nintendo 3DS titles. The Cube and the Unicorn really makes good use of the square screens to display both 3DS screens simultaneously. This feature has been highlighted as a significant advantage of the 1x1 aspect ratio. Nothing's perfect though, and you may find some 3DS titles that struggle on these devices. The same goes for GameCube and PS2 titles, which both units can play to varying degrees. The TA20 processor on the Cube does perform noticeably better than the G99 on the Unicorn though. This is supported by the experience of the hands-on reviewers, as well as synthetic benchmarks I have found online. From my subjective assessment, the Cube with optimized settings will probably handle 80-90% of PS2 games well, whereas the Unicorn will be more in the 60-80% to range. That's just my opinion based on my research. If you don't agree, let me know in the comments why you would differ with me. Choosing between the Anmanic RG Cube and the ZBG A1 Unicorn is not straightforward, as both devices offer compelling features for retro gaming enthusiasts. The Cube stands out with its unique design, RGB lighting and more powerful processor. Its performance is impressive, handling GameCube and PS2 emulation remarkably well. The Unicorn, while less flashy and a little less powerful, offers a more slimmed down design, awesome control inputs and front firing speakers. The Cube is selling for $174 at AliExpress and I will leave a link in the description if you're interested. Just make sure you're comfortable with what's happening in regards to the light bleed issue before you click on it though. The Unicorn has only been sold on pre-sale apparently and from a smaller company. So we don't have a retail price as yet, but pre-sale units were reportedly sold for roughly $130. Now retail units will be quite a bit more expensive, but if ZPG can bring these in at around $150 to $160, they may be able to compete, and I would certainly be willing to look at it if it's a little bit more affordable. Ultimately, the choice between these two units will also be a matter of personal preference in design and specific features. Which one would you choose? Let me know in the comments what you think. As promised, you can click on the link on screen now for more detail on the RG Cube if you want to check that out. And you can do that, as that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.